everyone. So thank you for joining me for part two of our radio flowers project. And what we're going to look at today is adding and layering in our color to make our flowers look more interesting and to try and blend the media that we're using. So media is a fancy word for the tools that we use to color. So no matter what you have at home, whether it's crayons, colored pencils, um, any kind of, you know, some people have paint markers, things like that. Whatever you have is great. I am going to be showing you a few different types of coloring that I'm going to be using. But the idea is that we are going to use as much color as possible. Um, first of all, because it's very similar to our inspirational picture that we have. Also, because our artist inspiration is Louis Comfort Tiffany, and you get to see some of his beautiful stained glass, focusing on flowers mainly, um, you can see all of those beautiful colors that he added in. So we want, kind of want to get that same effect. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of watercolor just in case you happen to have some. I also like the wash of color that it gives, but you can definitely do the same thing with colored pencil as far as adding in beautiful colors and having a lot of different ones to choose from. So we'll look at that too. So I finished my Radio Flowers sheet the paper and as you can see I added in one more this is almost like a butterfly flower if you kind of think of it that way with the shape of the wings so I'm going to go ahead and go in with some of my paints okay I happen to have I just had bought a kind of a plain simple watercolor tray so I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably choose I like the vibrant color so I might choose a pink to start with okay and I'm just going to go into the center of my flower and just make sure that I'm coloring in the edges. Now one thing I do want to do is I want to make sure that I have a multi-color effect that means more than one color. Okay. I'll leave that choice up to you. I do happen to want to go for multi-color again because we're trying to be kind of like stained glass. Okay, so I'm just going to tap that color in. My brush is pretty wet, okay? So you'll see the color is not super strong. I may go back in once it dries a little bit and add a little bit more. Okay, as it dries, I'm just going to keep layering it in. Give it a little bit of texture by tapping the brush. Okay, and then what I'll do is since I have the color, I'm going to go into one of my other, into my one of my other flowers and start to put in a little pink somewhere else. Now you can see as my brush is getting drier, it's applying more color and it's showing up as being a little more vibrant okay, or intense. Okay. So another big word that we can use for that, this is more saturated color. Okay. And I'll do the same as I go around. Now I also want to show you, so that's with paint, and again, with paint you have some options because you can keep it more saturated like I just showed you, or you can add more of your water and you can keep it very light too. So in my next one I might try and go, especially because I have more space to fill on this one, I might go a little bit lighter. Okay, and this is with a very wet brush. So again, just spreading that color out and filling in the space. So a wet brush is great if you wanna fill in a lot of space like this big flower that I have over here, okay? So just a couple painting techniques like I mentioned. Sometimes we have these little watercolor trays at home. So in case anybody does, I just wanted to share that. And for when you do, that way you have some ideas for your painting. So moving on to colored pencil. If you have colored pencil, I'm gonna to switch to a pink colored pencil right here. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of choices. If you were someone who decided to add a little bit of paint, you can also go back in once it's dry and you can layer a little bit of colored pencil over the top. That's called mixed media. That means when you're taking different ways to color or different tools to color and you're adding them together, blending them together. So that's kind of a cool effect too. I really, really enjoy that. The other thing you can do is you can Go ahead, I'm probably gonna color this one pink because it's almost it's towards the middle and it matches really well. Now for this activity, this project, what I'd like you to do is if you're coloring with colored pencil or crayon, 
is keep your shading really light. So as you're shading, press gently on the page and try and make your shading as smooth as possible. Okay. So we're taking our time. It does take a little more time to shade this way because you're, take, you're making sure that there are no big patches of white and that there's not a lot of texture. You're making everything pretty smooth. Okay, so this takes a little while. But as you can see, I'm filling up the same amount of space as my paint. And if you look at it from far away, it looks pretty similar, you have to say, right? Okay, so even if you have colored pencil or crayon at home, it's all good. But you will just have to take your time with coloring in and shading. Okay, so again, we want everything to be as vibrant as possible. Okay, so keep on coloring that. Now, we want to go in with as many colors as possible. So the next thing I'm going to choose is probably a green. And I'll just go ahead in and start calling my green here. And again, this is the one of the ones that I painted and now I'm just adding in colored pencil. So I'm mixing my media or mixing my colors. You can even go in if you have a marker and you can go ahead and add marker. And again, marker is pretty easy to get pretty smooth texture as well. So that will be a nice easy one. and we're going to continue with all our colors, trying to use as many colors as possible. And we're going to keep our texture nice and smooth. Whether you're painting, coloring in with marker, or shading with colored pencil or crayon, it's basically trying to make sure that we don't have too much of that white patchy space. We want a nice smooth color, we want a nice bright color, and we want it to be as saturated or as full of color as possible. So as you continue going on, I'm going to add in one other piece. So if you have finished and you can always color in the background or you could even add in, I'm thinking a pattern. I kind of like doing patterns. So if you have a Sharpie or a black marker, or in my case, I'm gonna probably use my black big thick crayon here. I'm, I, I really love patterns, so I might add some pattern to my background here. I like kind of like dots, so I might just add in some dots for just a different effect. And then once you've laid out all your color, because you guys were working in pencil, and I was obviously working in Sharpie, the background, your background lines are going to be lighter, okay? So you can also go over, if you have Sharpie, you can go over all of your edges in Sharpie at the, at the very end, okay? I'm gonna go over it in this because it'll cover over the Sharpie that I did. So you can obviously add that layer in if you want to at the very end. You don't have to, but I just feel like sometimes it makes our colors pop out a little more. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. Um, I hope that it inspires you to look at some of the beautiful things that are blooming outside. That's one of the things that also inspired me for this project. And thank you for joining me.